Good evening, Christian Life. Thank you for joining us uh, wherever you are joining us from, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or uh, on our website as well. Uh, I just wanted to come to you tonight to share something that's been kind of going on inside of my life, something that I've been reevaluating. And um, I know I've said this in the other videos that I've been doing recently, uh, but I wanted to share about 2020 and how it's been a time where I'm just sitting back and I'm thinking about all the different situations and people places, all that stuff in my life, looking back, reevaluating, saying, hey, where do I need to dive more into? Where do I need to kind of back off from? What things are important to me? What things are not so important to me? And the topic of the cost to follow Jesus uh, has just been, it's been bombarding my life. Just at what point uh, would I be willing to turn and walk away? At what, at what point will I get so offended that I just say, that's it, I'm done? And this is a question that about 14 years ago or so, I had to sit back and I had to ask myself, is this really worth it? Is it really worth to, to lose all my family, or lose all my friends, lose anything whatsoever to follow this man named Jesus? And after you know months of, of going through a Christian discipleship program and just really evaluating this question, uh, I came to the conclusion that yes, yes, Jesus is worth it. And uh, spoiler alert, I'll tell you, I don't regret it one bit even today, and I encourage you to do the same. Uh, but one place we're going to be looking for uh, or looking to today to get kind of uh, an idea of this. Uh, it's in the Gospel of Matthew. It's a passage of scripture that I'm sure you've read a hundred times yourself, heard people preach about this. Uh, but there's some key things in this one um, that I just wanted to kind of uh, share with you this evening. Uh, and it's in Matthew 19. We're starting in uh, <clears throat> verse 16. It's the rich young ruler. And so let's begin. And behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me if I'm good? The only one who, there is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> the young man said to him, All of these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go and sell what possessions you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying to, to each other, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Um, so just kind of a little bit of context here for you. Uh, we have this this man, this this rich man. He's referred to as a ruler. Uh, we don't ne we don't necessarily believe that he was kind of a Roman ruler because a Roman probably would have never came up to Jesus and and called him good teacher. Okay, he was probably a Jewish person, maybe a teacher in the synagogue. Uh, had people under him. He was a man of wealth, a man of great means. He knew the Bible or he knew the scriptures. He knew the commandments. He knew what was expected of him. And he probably on the outside, he lived a very pious life. He, he would have uh, just been a well-to-do person. And he comes up to Jesus after hearing all these things about Jesus, about him, him doing the miracles, him doing this and teaching and just how different this man Jesus is. And he's really wanting to, to, to follow Jesus. He's wanting to, to engage with Jesus. He comes up to him and says, hey, good teacher, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? Or what, what, what must I do to be saved. Um, and Jesus first stops him and he says, hey, why do you call me good? There, there's only one that's good and his name is God. Why do you call me good? Uh, and some people might step back and think, oh, well, that's kind of weird. But the thing is, Jesus was not questioning his divinity. He was really stopping this man right in his tracks and saying, hey, what's your definition of good? Let's think for a minute about what it actually means to be good and what it means to actually do good works. He's, he's stopping him right there. And then he goes on and continues. And Jesus says, hey, follow this commandment, this commandment, this commandment, this commandment. And he lists off a few of these different uh, from the Ten Commandments, some of the real important 
important ones, if you will. And the man sits back and is like, yeah, I've done this. I've been doing this since the day I was a young child. I've, I've done all this. What more do I lack, Jesus? I think I got this. And Jesus says, he looks at him and he says, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and then come follow me. Now, when some people hear this, the first time I heard this, it kind of shocked me a little bit. I was like, wait, I can't be rich? I can't, I can't have possessions in this world? I can't do this, this, and this? Jesus is telling me to sell everything to follow him? That's not exactly what Jesus is saying there. Remember, when we read these scriptures, we're talking about very specific things that were said to very specific people. But the heart message behind it is something that I think we can apply to our lives today. Jesus was looking at this man who, who put a lot of credibility who put a lot of emphasis on his title, on his position, on the things that he accumulated here in this world. And even though he might have done good things, his heart was still on those things. His heart was still on getting more things. His heart was still on keeping the things that he had, keeping the position that he had. He wanted just to kind of add Jesus to it. And Jesus was like, "Uh uh-uh, it's me or nothing. You can't come, you know, halfway in between. Jesus was showing him the cost to follow him. He says, hey, go sell everything and then come follow me. Don't just come follow me and then talk about selling things down the road. It's make the decision right here, right now. Come follow me. And the rich young ruler, as we know in the story, he walks away sad because his wealth was great that that he wasn't willing to give up all of that to follow Jesus. And the message is still the same today. And it's something I, I, I teach my students. It's something I've, I've, been, I've been preaching about since the day that I discovered this is the message of the cross. Uh, Jesus Christ requires all of us. It's a free gift. It's an absolute free gift. You are saved by grace through faith. It's a free gift, not that we can boast. But what it does require is that every little aspect of our life, we continuously give over to Jesus. And it kind of brings me into what I've been talking about here and what I've been kind of going through myself with 2020, reevaluating all the different quote unquote possessions that I have, relationships that I have, things that I invest my time in, things that I invest my money in, reevaluating everything and seeing is there something in my life that I have not yet given over to Jesus? Or is there something else in my life that maybe at one time I gave to him and then have been slowly taking it back to try to, you know, be the pilot of the plane again in my life? And I'll tell you, there has been some interesting things that God has brought up to me, um, just showing me the different ways that I have not truly given everything over to him, especially with, with being a father, with being a husband, with being, a, being in full-time ministry. There's always little different pieces in my life that I have to daily, daily make a conscious decision to say, Jesus, it's yours. Now, when we kind of return to this story here, uh, after this rich young ruler went away, the disciples, they were looking at Jesus and they were kind of really troubled. Uh, And we go on and we read and we see some of the different complaints that they had. They're like, Jesus, kind of what what happened, Jesus? You know, this man, he was he was coming here. He had all of these things. He, He seemed like a great guy. Why did he why did he turn and walk away? Why did you say to him? That it's, why did you say that it's easier, that it's more difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of the needle? Why did you say these things, Jesus? We gave up everything to follow you. And Jesus kind of sits down and explains it to him. And to you and I, when we think about you know the statement Jesus said that it's easier for a rich man to, or it's easier for a camel to enter the king, enter the, enter the. Oh my golly, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. You and I, when we think of that, we might not know what it truly means. We might be thinking, you know, with our 21st century minds, that it's kind of like a sewing thread going through a needle and trying to put a camel through there. But that's not what Jesus was talking about. Most people believe that he was actually talking about a place called uh, Camel's Gate. Uh, It's a kind of a small entrance, and kind of the idea was these huge walls that are around Jerusalem. Usually during the days, you would go through the main gates. Uh, But in order to keep the place safe and keep people coming in and out uh, throughout the time, they had these different gates or these different kind of hole-in-the-wall type of things where a person could get through there. Uh, But what they would have to do first is they would unload their camel, 
and they would take everything off of it. They would basically put the camel down on his knees to crawl through there while they're leading him through. And the person is carrying all the things that were on top of that camel because it would be impossible to have the camel actually be walking through. It's just kind of a real small hole. Uh, but just enough where you can actually get through there. And the idea was that enemies couldn't go through at nighttime because a large army couldn't just unload their camels unnoticed and kind of sneak in behind the walls. And so you get this idea of the complication and, and the great difficulty of being able to pass through this passage to get into this kingdom. And Jesus is saying for rich people, for people who have so much in this world, not just necessarily money, but possessions and, and different distractions, all these things, for a person to enter the kingdom of God, it's difficult, but it's not possible. They have to unload all this stuff and they have to feel their way through and kind of push through. They have to give up everything to enter into where they're trying to go. And so for us tonight, the idea of this message is I wanted to ask you to do the same th thing that I've been asking myself. What areas in my life have I not truly given over to God? What areas of my life is going to make it so difficult for me to get through this passage? What do I need to unload? Where do I need to go? What do I need to do? What do I need to invest more in? What do I need to pull back from? Sit down and evaluate your life like your life depends upon it.